everyone. Sorry, but we do have quite a few big items today, so we will go since we have a quorum. And the next item today is the Playgrounds of the Future on page 38 of your agenda. And welcome, Maria, Hannah. Okay, so most of you will know me and um, Hannah. You've seen us both plenty of times on this topic. Um, just like to point out that there's been some supplementary information popped on your um, desktops. We were just aware that there was a little bit of interest on the um, feedback process that's been run for the Hillcrest Park Playground, so that's in the second part. And then the first part tells you how the renewals program aligns with the proposed development program. Um, even though they are different programs, we do work them together. Um, so I guess just reminding everybody of the purpose today to seek the committee's recommendation for council approval of the revised Playgrounds of the Future Plan and Playgrounds Development Program. Um, remembering that the program review was undertaken um, essentially to deliver on the 10-year plan resolutions. Um, there's been a number of briefings and meetings on the topic, so at this point I'll leave it there and open for questions. Thank you. Now I am anticipating um, that there could be quite a few questions here. Yep. Um, and a number of councillors were able to come with us to a um, field trip to the Hillcrest area um, to get a uh, an understanding of the issues that they they have around play equipment there that will likely come up. So, first off the rank, Mangai Honi. Thank you. I've heard the chair. Um, just a quick question for twenty three. What's part four? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> so part. It's um it's a running, jumping, kind of rolling. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Just think of Tom. Trees, but you know, park or arbor, I don't know. Just imagine Tom Cruise <laughs> hurling himself off a building. James Bond, yeah. Uh, Councillor Pascoe. Thank you, Chair. Um, we've got a couple of questions. Do you think the timing of this report today, and I appreciate you've given us some supplementary information, which I haven't had a chance to read, but. Um, do you think the timing of this report is appropriate given that we are kind of two thirds of the way through in a public consultation, yet, you know, yet to hear from the submitters who want to hear, or who want to present to us in March? Um, do you think this report might be better held over until we've gone through that process rather than having it today? So the um, submissions that you're talking about are in respect to the um, draft neighbourhood and amenity uh, reserves management plan. Um, that document is intended to set the general direction of what you could expect to see in those spaces rather than the actual detail of projects being delivered. So it would indicate um, in a neighbourhood reserve if uh, it was appropriate for a playground site but it doesn't actually determine that there will definitely be a playground at that site. And it also addresses the whole reserve in terms of um, other amenities outside of playgrounds. But the, but the report is called Playgrounds of the Future. This report that we're considering now. Yes. And I'm just, I'm just not sure about the answer there as to whether it makes sense to me when we're in the middle of looking at um, the existing playgrounds of the future uh, program in respect to what we're doing in Hillcrest. Oh, so you're talking about the Hillcrest, which... Oh, sorry, yeah, that's a public <laughs> consultation, sorry. Yeah, no, I, I, think, I, I think there's still, if I can see if I can help here, um, I think there's still some confusion between the feedback that we sought, yeah. which was on our parks and reserves, which incidentally attracted the attention of, of um, the community around playgrounds, because a lot of playgrounds are on parks and reserves, yeah. It wasn't the review of the uh, tomorrow's, the playgrounds of tomorrow. It was the review of the parks and reserves. But of course, we'd have to acknowledge there will be some overlap in that. Yeah, 
And in terms of the um, specific Hillcrest engagement that's been carried out recently, um, that was intended to actually inform um, draft designs for, again, around the detail of what we would put in Hillcrest, necessary, not necessarily setting um, the question, will we do anything in Hillcrest at all? It's actually focused on, would they like to see um, junior play, senior play, bike theme, um, natural yeah, sure, area theme? Sure, yeah. sure, sure. So, but but what does, won't this report have an impact on what what I might call the second destination playground in the 10-year plan, which we, um, I, I don't think we agreed on it being in Melville, but certainly that's where it, where the next one was focused on insofar as um, um, the existing playgrounds of the future program. Um, so this program or the proposed program um, doesn't propose a destination site or fund a destination site until year four. Yeah, no, I understand that, but isn't this sort of sending our direction in a, it, it, what, won't this playgrounds of the future um, um, draft plan that we've got, won't that um, change what we currently call playgrounds of the future, which is centres around the destination playgrounds, and that was the report that was approved by Council, I think in 2000, and I'm, I'm guessing here, sorry, but about 2012? Um, yes, and, and as I said at the start, um, staff have endeavoured to deliver on the resolution that was given during the 10-year plan, <laughs> which um, asked, resolved that council redirect the current playgrounds funding in the draft 10-year plan to the continuation of the playgrounds of the future plan, noting that the plan is to be reviewed with a view to incorporating, upgrading and potential new playgrounds and potential skate parks. So what you see yep. before you today is endeavouring to deliver on that. So yes, it will change the existing playgrounds of the future plan as we know it, but we believed that's what we were being asked to do. Okay, and is, is that likely to be, and perhaps this might be better focused to Lance, is, does that represent a significant change that might require consultation given that we previously consulted in the long-term plan on, um, and I'm, I'm focusing here on the two destination playgrounds, which we called them then, the one in Hillcrest and potentially the one that was going to go to Melville as per the existing Playgrounds of the future plan. Uh, my understanding that it's uh, it's not of that level of significance. Um, so, look to be honest, we we have done a lot of consultation. We've had a lot of submissions on the ten-year plan. Um, through the development of the original plan, there was a lot of um, uh, work done by staff, a lot of feedback from the community, and I think what Maria is saying is that the direction from council was that. Uh, we want to have some destination playgrounds going forward, but we also wanted to have some more emphasis on neighbourhood playgrounds mm -hmm. and also bring in the skate component. So this, this is what this new rollout program, um, modified rollout program, is attempting to do um, within the fiscal envelope that was set by council. So uh, it would always be nice to have um, more resources, and, and there is some flexibility around uh, some of these projects where... Um, where the sites allow if, if the community came forward with some resources, and I mean the wider community in, in that sense, then it doesn't mean to say that we can't add some other components to those particular playgrounds. So I think um, rather than sort of getting fixated on destination playgrounds and then small neighbourhood playgrounds, I think it's about um, it's more about horses for courses and working with the communities on about what fits in a particular area. So you may have something that is as big as the lake, the main playground, but then you might have a neighbourhood. Neighbourhood playgrounds will probably differ in size yep. and, and yep. components of things like that. So, um, so the answer to your question is no, I don't think it's a significant um, change. We have taken into account a lot of the feedback we've got. I'll, I'll be quite honest, we're not going to please everyone all the time with this. And, and as you'll know, Stay. Councillor Rob, we've had a lot of submissions on playgrounds um, for a long time. So yep, understand that. We've, we've, we've tried to balance all of that together yep. with this pl program. Thank you. And, um, and I appreciate the work that's been done in this area and the consultation, and I hope that that does continue. The, other, the only other point that, or question that I had 
is around the one-third external funding, which you mentioned a couple of times in the report, but I couldn't see it in, um, in the Playgrounds of the Future paper. How, and I know, it's in the, I know it is in the um, specific resolution, um, which from my recollection, I didn't expect that it would have been there, but it is, and, and, and I, I suppose unless we change it, we're stuck with it. How, how limiting is that one-third external funding? Because the way it's worded in the resolution is quite vague. How limiting do you think going forward that one-third um, external funding contribution requirement is going to be in terms of being able to deliver reasonable uh, number of playgrounds that the community is expecting if that funding is not specifically available. So, so that, that is the limitation. It's like any external funding. It's never guaranteed. I'd have to say, though, that our um, track record over the past five or six years is that uh, we have been successful in attracting um, generally that third funding. And you can see that uh, this year we've already got 277,000, so things are going well. Um, but also you see in the report that we do have to juggle that against the other priorities that Council set in our external funding plan around the gardens and the Zoo Waifakariki um, projects. Um, so that's why um, we have to make sure that we don't cannibalise ourselves when we're looking for external funding. Um, but um, my experience is that um, we have been successful in that space. And with Tony slash Lisa, who's now on uh, parental leave, um, they're looking at uh, different ways of um, in uh, different sources of funding and resources as well. So it may not just be cash. Um, it can be in kind and things like that. It can be developers putting in components or um, playgrounds themselves to make their um, their uh, areas more attractive. So, so I think we have to be reasonably innovative. But I'm reasonably confident that we. We will attract that funding, and we're in um, constant contact with a number of the funders. One recently, who I was at a social function with, they are very impressed with our program, and um, they would like to do some further research and to get some empirical information on the actual the impacts on local communities, so that they could actually um, not only use that for their reporting purposes, but also um, uh, put that information out nationwide. Okay, so given that it's been successful to date, you think that you would remain quite nimble enough to come back to us and say at some future point, it's not working now, we can't get the one-third funding, we need to relook at that resolution to see whether it's still fit for purpose? Absolutely, and we'll do that through um, Chris's Capital um, uh, Investment Board, so looking at our whole capital programme, and if there's any... Um, notion that we're going to have challenges or um, problems in that space, then um, we'd obviously bring that through Councillor Gary's committee as well, just so that councillors are aware. So, um, you know, we report that, what, every six weeks. So I think we'll be um, in a good space to be able to do that and say to you, well, we're actually thinking, you know, things are getting a bit tougher and we may not be able to achieve that. So um, that is the threat, though, um, obviously, with our debt-to-revenue ratio and our, um, you know, the challenges around our headroom. If we don't get the external funding, we can't go ahead with the projects, but we will give you the um, first heads up on that as soon as possible if Thank that you. does, does right. eventuate. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Basco. Councillor Henry. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair, and thank you for the report. And um, yeah, it was actually really interesting going on the field trip. So thank you so much for that invitation for us to come along, and have a listen, and, and have a listen to to the people that live close by. I'm just wondering, do we? Um, do we really listen to the public? I mean, I know you do a lot of consultation, but if people are really, um, really driving something, do we uh, really support them when they want to drive something? And I mean, I'm talking about Hillcrest Park, you know, for example. Um, do we give them enough support in that area? Because isn't it, uh, isn't it awesome when people in the community want to drive something? So how? Is there enough that we can do, or do we do enough for them to, to help them drive the, where they want to go? Um, again, to Lance's point, I think we've got a reasonably good track record in that space, particularly with playgrounds. If you think to the northeast, um, that really was community led, and um, the community now value the assets that have been created in that space. And, um, we believe we're following the same process for the Hillcrest and affording the same opportunity to the Hillcrest community. 
and um, really believe that we will get um, the results. Great. I just saw one of the well, the, uh, one of the ladies did a did a poll online as well. Did, did, did we are we putting that into the context as well of, of our report, or is that sort of separate from what we've done here? Um, we did run a survey and um, we did encourage Liz to um, feed in and get her networks to feed into that survey. Okay. We did meet um, Liz and her um, other community members on site, so yes. Okay, awesome. Um, and the last question is, uh, look, we, we're asking for uh, one third of external funding and, and I, I think um, I might want to ask Lance that. Uh, um, can we use that uh, same criteria for the stadium, stadia as well? When we renew something, that we get funding, like for the lights at the cricket stadium, one third external funding. <laughs> I know it's sort of a renewal you, program. You could give it a go. I, <laughs> I wouldn't like to hazard a guess on our chances of success. Okay, thank you, Councillor Bunting. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thanks for the report, guys. Um, appreciate the work you put in tippy-toeing through this one. Um, just, uh, I was interested in Deborah's submission earlier on. Her, did you hear that yep. when she was talking? And uh, she, she made it pretty clear that she felt that um, perhaps we should be, and it was due to your questioning, I think, Madam Chair, about um, we should be building more rather than polishing what we've got. What's your reaction to that? Um, so yes, I spoke with Deborah following, we went outside oh, yeah. and had a chat and um, yeah, definitely her view is that the gaps should be addressed as a priority. Um, you'll be aware that with our renewals program we have a focus on looking after what we've got. Mm -hmm. So um, in some respects that's a mixed message to Deborah's priorities in terms of um, making sure that our renewals are funded. Um, the other thing that might help you in that space is Appendix 2. Um, gives you a map yes, of the that, city. Yeah. So um, what we have delivered in this draft program doesn't um, specifically direct, uh, address all of the gaps. There are gaps there. Mm, mm. Um, but it does, again, try to deliver on the resolution that we were given in terms of allowing for new playgrounds, managing our renewals, and incorporating some skate and other areas that we haven't done before. So. Yep. No, yeah. I appreciate it. It's expensive and you can't please everybody. Um, what's the difference there between, just on that appendix, page 44, between basic neighbourhood and old neighbourhood? So the basic neighbourhood is where we would just have an old swing and a slide. You, you know yep. the sort. Yep. Um, an old neighbourhood is an older modular unit. Right. So it's a little oh, bit more than a swing and a slide, but it still is old. So I'm thinking of, for example, down... Uh, what is it, over by the back end of Pirate Stadium? There's yep. one seesaw left, I think. Yep. Was it? Yeah. Is there, um, do you have plans to do anything with the likes of that? Because I see nothing's going to get done in the Chartwell area for another five years. We do have plans for that site um, for this year. We're replacing the swing set that was removed um, oh, a while ago now due to safety issues. So that comes under renewal. And we're also looking at opportunities there for some kind of natural play type yeah. type play there just to make it a bit more interesting. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I'll mention that in debate later. But um, okay, so so we, we can't see that in this report though, eh? That you've got that that minutiae of that sort of work. So when we get questions from our neighbourhoods about that, mm -hmm. how do we report back to them that this is due to be done? Apart from coming to ask you, is it I was gonna say that is quite a complex sort of Based because we yeah. are aligning a number of different things into one, so your best bet mm. is to um, talk to Hannah and okay. the team. Yeah, yeah. cool. Mm. Yeah. All right, that's cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Councillor Bunting, mm. Councillor O'Leary. Thanks, Madam Chair. Isn't that what what he is? Re isn't is it this? Or are you saying that um, is isn't what he was asking a renewal, and shouldn't it be on this list? If you're turning a, one of those scoty old s swing set seesaw things, yeah, that should be on this list. We're we? replacing a swing that was there until recently, so it's not a major renewal. So you're saying it's so minor it's not classed as a renewal yeah. project? We address things through maintenance budgets, renewals, and new capital budgets. Okay. So, yeah. So there's a maintenance so budget that Reg. Um, and his people from city parks, you know, mainly around safety and that sort of thing. Okay. So there might be, sometimes it might be a whole swing, it might be yep. 
yep. you know, just the seat, or it might be a chain or something like that. So yep. that's sort of like business as usual sort of safety so, so stuff. There, so yeah. there's there's um, elements of grading in terms of fixing a thing that's actually just broken or a yep. safety issue mm -hmm. to a renewal project mm -hmm. to new. Yes. Yeah, okay. there's always a bit of grey between maintenance and renewals. And yeah. When you get into yeah. seven wire fences or um, fences and things like that, you know, yeah. how much is a renewal and how much is maintenance? So there's always, there's always, um, you know, sometimes a little bit of a grey area. Mm -hmm. So um, just coming back to Deborah speaking to us this morning in the public forum, if I look at this, I, I, her point was. Yes, it, look, it's fine to do all of these things, but there are areas in the city that have been waiting for a long time for anything. So this is not renewals. This is this is this neighbourhood needs a playground. Yeah. But this document that you gave to us just now, excluding Mangaiti and Hillcrest Stadium, there's only one new destination skate park and one new destination playground in 22, 23 to be confirmed, a location to be confirmed. So there are, we're not addressing Deborah's concerns for those communities that literally have nothing with, until, uh, in this 10 year plan basically, if I look at this list. There is no new neighbourhood or swing sets or any kind of playground equipment going in anywhere over the next 10 years. Um, so Hillcrest Stadium is one of those. No, no. So I said excluding Mangaiti and Hillcrest. Yep. Um, I've got Deborah's yep. comments in my head. Yep. According to this list, there is none. Um, and if I can refer to attachment one, um, we've got the Melville area, the Chartwell, Dinsdale, Rotatuna and Pukiri, but yes, they are later. So they are outside the 10-year plan? Yes. Okay. I'll have to come back to that. Come Remembering, um, sorry, that in the last mm -hmm. playgrounds of the future plan, um, Hillcrest and Glenview were identified as priorities and gaps, and they have yep. been addressed within this 10-year yep. plan. So we don't, we no longer have a playgrounds policy, which no. was the where the previous council put a stake in the ground and said all residents should mm -hmm. live within 500 metres of a playground. So we no no longer have that direction for. The organisation, unless it's flicked to a management policy, which I'm assuming it hasn't. So that's gone as well. Um, just on the report, uh, page, electronic page 39, under background point 10, you've said there that council, oh, the, uh, community satisfactions with destination playgrounds is high. However, we're receiving an increased number of requests for improvements to neighbourhood playgrounds. Are you, what kinds of requests are those and why are they coming in? So that was through um, looking at 10-year plan, annual plan submissions from the last few years, the um, Parks Week survey that we ran last year um, and just regular feedback that we get get from residents so, wanting to so, lift yep. the standard so of the neighbourhood playgrounds. Yeah. So are they ask, are they requesting my playground in my area is a bit yuck? I want you to clean it up. So it's those kinds of requests. Are we yes. getting any request, requests from the community uh, supportive of Deborah Fisher's concerns in that there's nothing in my playground? What are you guys doing about it? Um, um, yes. So there were submissions to the 10-year plan on that, um, largely led by Liz Selby from memory. Um, yeah, yeah, sorry, okay, so I, I just, I read the report as this is a review of the plan, I thought that when you're saying there's an increasing number of requests, that this is outside the 10-year plan, because I've read all the submissions, so I know that, yeah. but it's not, you're referring back to the comments from the 10-year plan. And, and, and Liz has helpful. been consistent in her messaging and um, yeah. has approached a number of elected members in the same way, so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, just under the financials for year one on page 41 um, and point 33 year, uh, 33, you've got uh, 10 year capex is 900,000. So that will deliver uh, Hillcrest, Mangaiti and the upgrade to Inners Common? Yes. Yes. So that'll do all three. Okay. Yep. Now, um, 
I'm on I'm on attachment one, the actual playgrounds of the future, and that and it was my amen, uh, my motion that was put forward uh, during the LTP for this work. So thank you for bringing it back. But is the future of the playgrounds plan that we had now replaced with these two pages? Yes. So that's that's the only direction that we have now to build playgrounds, other than renewals, budgets, and things like that. Yeah. So the only outcome that our residents can see are, is our vision of playgrounds, a vibrant social creative spaces for everyone to play together. And then there's a <coughs> list of one, two, three, four, five, six outcomes. So that's the only direction where we have now. Yes. Okay. So why is that? Um, we're also working through the play strategy, which um, is yet to I understand there's been briefings on the play strategy, but it's yet to come back formally to council, which will set some direction in that space yep. as well. So the motion, I, and I'm sorry, elected members, I can't remember who seconded it. It was either Dave, I think it was, was Councillor McPherson. No, the me. intention of us putting that motion together and, and working together on that was that I was obviously a big supporter of Destination Playgrounds, and Dave was coming, Council McPherson was coming from the view of neighbourhood playgrounds and more playgrounds, and a lot of other elected mes members were wanting that as well. Yep. It seems to be missed out here. Um, remembering that there's a financial envelope that we were given yep. to work to, and um, staff have tried very hard to um, deliver what you've asked for within that financial envelope, acknowledging that perhaps it hasn't gone as far, hasn't delivered as much as you would like, but it is within the financial envelope. Yeah, I understand that. I get, yeah, okay, I'll save my comments for debate. Um, sorry, I'm working electronically. I'm always a little bit slow. I think that's all my questions for now. Thank you. Councillor McPherson. Yeah, look, um, I guess following Angela and Mark's some um, questions a little bit, um, the policy of having a playground within 500 <coughs> metres where we were and lived, that was removed, was it not, when we developed the plan, playgrounds of the future plan that had destination playgrounds, because obviously you yes. couldn't do destination playground everywhere, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, okay, so that's when that was removed. But nevertheless, the current plan is trying to get back towards some balance in terms of distance. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, when we came up with the list that you have here, and thanks for that, did, were you looking at the demographics, like where are people having <coughs> babies that in two years will want to go on swings and slides and, uh, and in, in ten years will want um, you know, uh, things for bigger kids, that sort of thing? Yes, that was taken into consideration, as well as the spread across the whole city, the network of playgrounds. Okay. Um, play, just, just sorry. Just jump in there. I think just with um, uh, growth areas like Peacocks yeah, and Rotokauri Rot yeah. Rot and some of the special housing areas, th this will be something that will, um, I think it will be prudent to review this every two or three years, you know, well, between LTPs. I was LTPs. coming to that, so yeah. thank you for yeah. um, being ahead of me there. Because I had two questions, one concerning the growth areas and the other concerning the, the need for this to be only indicative after year one of it, really, because there's nothing, I'm asking if you agree that there's nothing more um, likely to cause um, debate in a new council than where playgrounds are going, or very few things more likely. And would this not be a good idea after 2018, 19, and maybe in 19, uh, even the second half of 1920 to put it up to a new council and say, how do you feel about this? This is where we were going, but um, yeah, let's and I think, not lock anything down further. Yeah, I, I, th I think this is indicative, and I think it, um, what you're saying is with everything, all the moving parts in a, you know, a growing city, and I think also Councillor Rob's point before around how we're going on external funding, not just for playgrounds, but for the gardens and for Waifakariki and yeah. the zoo. I think all those moving parts need to be taken into account and reviewed, and that, essentially that's why we do an LTP, but I think we'd have to get this in the right um, sequence to actually review 
as we go into the next 10-year plan with all those things in mind? I guess uh, my, the, my question arises out of, the, I think, my feeling on it is that the, it had to be demands from elected members to cause the reviews to happen the last couple of times, and would it not be better to actually schedule? We know there's going to be queries, so let's put it in for yeah. February 2020 and February 2023, because we might as well make it virtue out of a necessity. Yeah, I think you've been probably um, had your glass to the wall listening to staff's um, okay. sort of <laughs> discussions over the last couple of weeks. So. We're all on the same page, Lance. <laughs> um, specifically on things like Peacocks and Rotakuri, and I had Ruakura as the other, and Tiawa too, the big um, SHAs and development areas. Should we not have a, almost a different policy? Well, what do you think about the idea of almost a different policy where when they come into our planners, the planners send them along to talk to you guys and say, where's the park going to be and what equipment are you going to put in as part of your development before it even gets to invest, being vested in us? Because that's, look, Rotatuna, we all know that they had next to no playgrounds for years because that wasn't done. Now it's you know, then there's a big public upsurge of demand for them. Let's get ahead of the game. At least get your swing and slide in a, into every area with more than but a couple hundred houses. So I'm asking, yeah, I know. Getting close, yeah. yeah Thank so you. So, would, do you think that's a good idea? Yes. <laughs> so it's currently happening. Great. Yeah. But it's not a, the problem is it's not listed in here. So if someone was thinking of doing that. We, I, I just think it should be more explanatory, should it not, about the indicative nature of later years and the other opportunities and requests that are going to come up. Yep. I think it's a good point. Thanks. Question? Well, I think I know what it might be on, but a question from Councillor Gallagher. Around the comms strategy, I think Councillor McPherson's raised the issues. I think just to the general manager and, and staff, because obviously that's a little bit of confusion around when we talk about existing playgrounds, which caters for new builds in that an area, but in the new growth areas, I think I've got this obviously some comm strategy. And the question around yeah. that is, please. Well, I, yeah, I, th I think, I think. Y yes, there will be a comm strategy. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, it's just I think there's some confusion. That's all. I am. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure in the debate there'll be a lot of people wanting to make some points. I've got I've got a couple of questions, and I'll just take them now, and then Angela, you can have your second raft of questions. Um, I there's there's a little bit of anxiety when people see a plan like this. What's in, what's out? So my question relates to. I think I heard you say that the first three calves out of the rank, Mangaiti, Hillcrest. And at the moment, it's got a stadium, but I imagine there's still some conversation around stadium. Uh, but you can answer that in a minute. And in as common, um, the community uh, feel that if we say yes to this plan, then they're cut out of any future conversation about what is delivered in their area. That's not so. Is that what you said? You said that you would go and there will be the same level of community-led um, approach that you had for Tahuia and Haripuki, is that what you're saying? So we received the message loud and clear from elected members that they wanted the community to have more involvement in what shapes their play spaces. And so, yes, um, we're consulting currently, or we've been asking for feedback currently on Hillcrest Stadium and the renewal at Hillcrest Park. So um, we would follow that same process as we um, go through in as common Melville. Yeah. And how will you, how you, how would you factor in the public view around which has the, has the most priority, stadium or park? Because I've seen a lot of social media traffic on that, and I've had a lot of personal um, approaches. Actually, I will just mention, to be, out of respect to Councillor Casson, who sent me a message yesterday, that he would like to also understand the stadium versus Hillcrest Park issue. He's erring on the Hillcrest Park as being more important because it's more within the... So your view on that? Um, so remembering that we're not talking about building a destination playground at either site. Yeah. We're talking about delivering an extra play space for the Hillcrest community in Hillcrest Stadium and completing a renewal at Hillcrest Park. Also remembering Lance's comment before that when the renewal is renewing something from the 70s, it is not going to look like for like. 
because we can't go and buy a, plate, a Flintstones car off the shelf and plonk it back in situ. So you, you're likely to see something similar to what you see at Steel Park um, as a Hillcrest Park renewal, and then you'll see a similar size new site at Hillcrest Stadium. Okay, so that's good. So the community then can have confidence that the conversation about that has only just begun in terms of the final design and what it looks like on both sites. So we've given you the draft themes out of the feedback that we've yep. requested to date. And yep. so there's strong support for natural play elements at Hillcrest, strong support for sport-based play and structured play at Hillcrest Stadium. So we then will present to the community our concept designs and they'll get another opportunity to say, um, we like this or we, you've missed the boat. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So community-led design is where we're heading in that space. So, yeah. so cuz I need to to I want to um, be able to move this with the confidence that I haven't shut the community out of deciding what their play space looks like and you're saying I haven't. You haven't. Um, in respect to the funding, the third funding which is in 13B, uh, you give us a little bit of an idea of the page over how it's tracking if now that we've got a proper vision for Hillcrest, we can attract further external funding through Rotary or, or some, some other um, partner, um, they could even get a better result. Yeah. So and, and would we build it so that the, whatever we can afford, and I'll talk to that in my debate, whatever we can afford right now is the sort of playground that's easily built onto so you can get better over time as funding comes in? That's absolutely our intent. And the, if I got right, in terms of some of the other parks that you would have, or places that you would have spoken to Deborah about in the break, um, what you're saying with the financial constraints that we put through in the LTP, the amount of money we allowed, plus the requirement for one third to be come from outside, you are doing the very best you can with that money to get as much, part, much bang for your buck the parks but there might it might not address all areas we believe so yes okay so that would be a conversation for council at the review of the LTP wouldn't it if they wanted to yes crank up the delivery of playgrounds okay so I've understood that all correctly yes. thank you um, thank you Councillor O'Leary thank you Ms. Um, Madam Chair just just one question on the name of this I don't think uh, it's quite right to call it Playgrounds of the Future Plan. We had that plan, that's done now. Um, if you're saying that this is, is actually indicative, we should express that on, this should just perhaps be an indicative Playgrounds Plan or Playgrounds Plan 2019 indicative, something like that. Yep. Because I think we will come under a bit of criticism otherwise. So that would be my suggestion. And Madam Chair, I'll move it when you're ready. Thank you, I'll second it. Yeah. Councillor O'Leary moves, I'll second into debate, you uh, get your right yep. uh, your mover. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think that change, I think it's important to be really transparent about which plan we are um, approving here. I would have actually, I would have liked to have seen some actual policy applied to this plan and I don't see that that has occurred, certainly not from an elected member level. It may have, you may have some policy around this yourself. Um, I would have also liked to have seen some rationale around what you recommended, um, why you're choosing that, that locations, and more, impo yeah, more importantly, why you're making those recommendations. I would have liked to have seen in this review of this plan um, the renewals and upgrades uh, over a city map that shows areas of the community that have nothing that shows areas of low deprivation and also um, some demographic information. I would have liked to have seen that rationale because I, uh, um, I support what Deborah Fisher said to us this morning. And I think that with this indicative plan, while we can move, and Councillor McPherson's right, this will come up again in the new council, I think we're missing some opportunities. I understand there's a financial envelope, but it's up to the elected members to uh, create policy and implement policy, and I think that step's been missing. 
um, I was the one that did put in the third external funding because if anything attracts funding, it is playgrounds and the evidence that council, um, prior councils have had before us that, that it's an, it is an easy thing for an uh, external organisation to fund. They want to fund, they want to uh, give money to children. So um, that, I'm very supportive of that and I have no doubt in my mind. It's also that kind of funding for playgrounds comes from those groups like Rotary, um, from the Lions, from, from smaller community groups and that gives them a sense of participation in our, in our children and in our city. So um, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor O'Leary. I'll save my comments for now, Councillor Bunting. Thank you, Madam Chair, um, and thank you for uh, for your report. It's uh, and and your work on this. It's you know, everyone's got an opinion on it, and uh, and everyone's spoken passionately about it. And they'll, I don't see that stopping in a hurry. Um, for what it's worth, um, I I still think we could go smaller still with some of our uh, our new equipment, um, pocket parks, individual play equipment dotted around town, uh, etc. That's that's my vision for play, and I, I really like the way our play strategy is heading along that way. I like the fact, too, that we do have a play strategy coming up, um, and I see in the not-too-distant future that this will hang off that. So I think that's a little bit um, horse getting in front of the cart again. So um, I think that's where the policy that uh, Councillor O'Leary is looking for will, will be, will be um, and this will, I think, become more of an operational document. Um, but like I said, I think we can still go smaller still. Um, my vision is for, you know, uh, if there's a great hill, put a great slide on it. If there's a great gully, put a great swing over it, etc. You don't necessarily have to have everything in one place. A Sport Waikato supported that point to a degree when they talked about more organic play and more um, places to play rather than organised play things. Um, you know, we, we, we do, you know, we're all grown-ups here. Most of us have got kids. Uh, we've all um, been through in our minds what would be great where. Um, I personally think you know we, we need to stray away from the over-organised um, mentality that we've had for many, many years um, in this country. Um, and if you think, um, well, it's, if you over-organise it, it becomes a little bit contrived and it can become very, very expensive. And that has been the, the criticism of our beautiful destination playgrounds, that, they, that this is where you shall play. Now, as the owner and trainer of three uh, great kids, once they've done a destination playground a few times, they've done a de destination playground. And I think there's more scope for them to wander around town um, with smaller equipment all over the place. And if you're if you are grey on the area of expense, just look at the, uh, the fact that two of our destination playgrounds are up for renewal before we can put any new stuff in here uh, in this existing plan. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about our play strategy, and I think this will all become a lot more clear. I, I, again, grateful for the, uh, for the work. Uh, that you have done. It's not easy. We've given you um, not nearly enough money, um, but there never is. Um, so I'm very keen to see how this evolves into turning Hamilton into a playful place rather than a place that just has nice playgrounds. I'm finished. Thank you. Councillor McPherson. For the next words of wisdom <laughs> there, Bounty. No, 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 no. You're hanging off of it. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Look, um, I'm not sure how old your kids are at the moment, Bunty, but if I took my grandkids along to a playground, there was just one thing there, I'd be carting them there and then there and about five different places in, in one outing. So I, I do think that your minimalism is a bit too minimal. Um, we, need, we need some small playgrounds, not just play equip equipment. Um, I, I'm sure of that. So I'm sort of reasonably happy with the direction of travel that we're going in here. There is more money than there was before, but there's probably only half as much as we need. Um, and I think that's something we need to look at uh, next um, LTP, and I'm sure we'll all be here to do that. Um, the destination playgrounds, I th the policy of having them at the ex to the exclusion of every anything else is which we, which we had before under the last council, caused some real problems. We lost local playgrounds. Karaka Street, those of you remember, when they were damaged, we, we did, it wasn't renewed. So the kids in that area, which was a, a low, a high deprivation area, uh, lots of young kids, lots of families, solo fam parent families and things like that, lost their 
local playground because we use the excuse of our destination playground policy um, to not renew the damaged one there. We nearly had the same happen in the middle of Bears Court, and it was only because local residents actually got a bit organised and caused a fuss there that we renewed the little swing and slide after they were damaged. So I'm pleased that we're getting back to a mixture. There is room for destination playgrounds, and it's quite good. I think in a year you can go around the five or six we've got, and by the time you come to the next year, they've forgotten about the <laughs> year before, and you can do it again. Uh, that, that works OK. But, but you've, got, you, you've got to have the local playgrounds that you, kids can walk to, you can drop off kids at and go pick them back <coughs> later if they're old enough, some things like that. You've got to have that flexibility. I would like to see, in the case of Hillcrest, the reasons for the two different ones, because my own view is Hillcrest Park is in the middle of the residential area, but you couldn't say that you have to travel if you're going to Hillcrest Stadium area in most cases, and that's a, just a little bit of a warning bell in terms of our policy, that particular one there. And So I'm sort of saying, well, I'd like to see more effort go into Hillcrest Park not not nothing at Hillcrest Stadium, but um, let's just maybe tip, readdress that balance there. Thanks. Thank you, Dean. Um, Councillor Gallagher. Thank you. Uh, General Manager, would you please convey uh, to the staff team my uh, deep admiration and appreciation for all the work they have done. I think they've been incredibly um, interactive and professional. And I think the, the real issue here is this council means well. This council wants to do what it can within a budget allocation and hopefully with community external funding to get the best network we can. And obviously I certainly recognise the need in future for destination playgrounds, particularly I think southwest, southeast. Uh, but um, obviously the high quality, good neighbourhood playgrounds um, are really important because we shouldn't forget that there are a number of families whose circumstances are they can't drive across town to a destination playground. The, the way they access that is basically by walk, you know, pushing a, a push chair and a, and a pram. And that's all about enriching and making our neighbourhoods human, with, you know, putting stuff into our neighbourhoods where people can have that sense of community, uh, etc. Um, obviously, we'll be following the Hillcrest development um, for both playgrounds with great interest and acknowledge, uh, particularly, you know, one submission we got from the Hillcrest High School students, which was brilliant. And I think that's the thing um, to, and I think you're doing this, is obviously where we have those is that we, we do the m kind of micro neighbourhood feel. So it's not so much what I think, because I live on the other side of town, but certainly working uh, with those communities and at that grassroots level is really important. And obviously, um, as I said, with a comm strategy, is I think we do need to clear off that, yes, we do aspire to build new playgrounds in new areas of development and perhaps just fine-tuning that comm strategy. When we're talking about redeveloping existing playgrounds, we're also acknowledging that in increasing parts of our city there's more and more people through infill and high density <coughs> dwellings and obviously so not only are you upgrading playgrounds but you're, you're taking account that when they were first built the density of population in that area was lower. I just want to pick up and this, a submitter, this, the submitter this morning um, made the point around this 500 metre, you know 500 metres and that's obviously not just about playgrounds that's about what I talked about with Sport Waikato about the green space, community space, and where where we don't have a council park or pocket park, where is the nearest school? And you know that's where we've got to work with our principals to take those, open those wretched fences, and where possible, uh, share with schools, which we can do. You know, obviously, a playground have some agreement with them. You know, we don't necessarily have to own the green space, but we do own it because if it's a school green space, we own it through our tax dollars. So I think that's um, uh, you know also uh, extremely important. One big bouquet I see I think in is common playground upgrade, and of course if you look at the lake, that is you know it's really nice to see in a different character that we're developing the Innes Common side <coughs> of, of the lake area. So that's just one extra addition. So um, I really hope 
that we communicate out there that we are meaning well and we want to do best by our residents in consultation with our residents. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Councillor Pascoe? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Look, I don't disagree with um, comments of the, of the previous speakers. I have great admiration for Maria, Hannah and their team for the work, particularly working closely with the communities in terms of trying to take our limited fiscal envelope and get the best bang for our dollars in terms of what we can deliver uh, to playgrounds. I uh, agree with Councillor Dave. Um, I can't remember how many times I've transversed the city to get to the lake playground with my, some of my five grandchildren who just seem to keep wanting to go back and back to that playground, irrespective of the fact that they've grown a bit older since they started going there, but there's just so many fun things to do. So I think destination playgrounds do have a future. Uh, in the city, but I also think too that um, that local playgrounds will do. What I think we have with this report today, though, is a potential communications risk, and um, and I um, admire um, Councillor O'Leary's wish to change the heading on the report. But I think we need to take some care with how we communicate back the outcome of this report. And I see Jeff's over there um, busy writing down some good notes. I hope. Um, because I think it will be important how um, this, uh, the outcome of today's report is actually communicated to our public in terms of not only what we're doing at the moment, but what we will be doing in the short term and maybe long term future around playgrounds. We are a city um, that has predominantly um, a young population. I think we're still rated the third um, I'd say not younger city, but city with the youngest population. So they are an important part of our population in terms of meeting, um, meeting uh, residents' needs. So therefore, I think that playgrounds and parks continue to form a very, very important part of how we, of how we develop and enhance the city going forward. Thank you. I'm a meat, spuds and veggies kind of guy, which you probably know. Um, so this is, a, I see as a matter of priorities. Um, we do not have a surplus of money, uh, and I would prioritise homes for families, and we know the whole country, let alone Hamilton itself, has huge problems in that regard. And also uh, prioritising land for businesses to expand and develop, and we are losing a multi-million dollar uh, local business uh, happening right now um, because they can't find land to develop and expand on. So uh, the this so yeah, I, and I totally agree. Playgrounds are a part of a first world community. We live in a first world community, but over and above playgrounds is homes for people, families to live in, and businesses for people to uh, get employed in. So I um, can't support this at all. So I'm not, I, I mean, it's a bigger picture to me between um, neighbourhood playgrounds and destination playgrounds. It's playgrounds versus homes and businesses and jobs. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Henry. I won't repeat any of what was said, and it's been really great to debate. Um, look, I, I think you, you, you've done a great job there, Maria and Hannah and the team, and under immense financial constraints. But I, I do, like Councillor Leary, I would like to see clearer the areas where there is deprivation, where there's nothing, there hasn't been anything for a long time. So, but, you know, um, some, area, some areas are very vocal and we, we always run to sometimes the loudest uh, call and, and some areas cannot be as vocal, but they still have the same need at the, as the louder area and uh, because they've got other challenges going on in their lives and they cannot concentrate on, on pushing for play grants, but I don't want them to lose out. And just like our speaker this morning talked about uh, one of the, these areas. And as Councillor Gallagher mentions repeatedly about Tamahiri, I will keep on harping on about ma the massive costs our stadia swallow up and our children who are the future of our city are missing out. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Henry. I'll 
say a few words in debate myself. Um, I will support this recommendation because I have been given the confidence uh, that Hillcrest will get two playgrounds this year, one way or the other, and that the community will be fully engaged and have input into the design and type of those playgrounds. And I think that is a key message out there because I don't want anyone to think that we've made this decision so it's set in steel and then their input's not welcome. Uh, I'm also quite pleased, or very pleased, to see Melville in the upcoming year. And I have some concerns uh, with Glenview, because so, I do think that those are areas where the equipment's quite old. And I've been around and had a look at them. I have to say, um, the Hillcrest thing came to my attention when I realised that the play equipment um, just off Masters Avenue there is essentially the same play equipment that my 27-year-old daughter used to play on when we lived in that area and walked to the Hillcrest Library, and that can't be good enough. Um, but the staff have done an excellent job. You have done an excellent job in that context. So I want to thank you for the field trip that you put together with um, Jamie Strange. Uh, some of the councillors, thank you for coming on that with, uh, with us. Um, I also actually do want to speak very highly and acknowledge the passionate advocacy of people like Liz and Deborah. Because uh, we always say that we do want public participation into our decision making. And with people like that, you do have public participation in our decision making. And so I'm hoping that they will, be, they will continue to be involved and that the schools and the kindergartens and other key stakeholders in Hillcrest and Melville will also be, can continue to be uh, involved because that led to excellent results for Tuhuia and Harupuki. Um, I think we have to take some responsibility in terms of, what, of what's getting done when, as, as politicians, as governors, not just as staff, because other financial choices that we made last year in the long-term plan mean that some of the playgrounds won't be done as quickly or to the scale that we originally anticipated when the uh, playgrounds of the future plan was new and in the previous council. We made those choices to where money would be spent and we made those choices as politicians and we have created a constraint in that area and staff have to work all the harder to be equitable in spending that um, reduced funding. Um, I also support um, the approach on play and I haven't yet had a good look at the play strategy, Amanda, but we've got time together coming up because I don't think we should be constrained just about tr traditional playgrounds. Um, uh, we have to look at all ways that we can allow people to play at all places. And just two examples of that that do work. Christmas in the Park, up in the north, was a play-rich experience. Yes, it was an event, it had music and so on, but the children were playing on multiple things and um, having a great time. The Western Community Centre runs a number of days a year that are also very play-rich the one with the snow and the ice and so on. So I think that those things are just as important, bringing people together, building community through engaging together. So um, that is the reason why I will support um, Oli uh, Councillor O'Leary's uh, movement today. Movement, that doesn't sound right, her <laughs> motion. <laughs> I support you, Angela, your motion. <laughs> Write, you don't need to write a reply? Okay, good. Oh, you have to, then I have to leave that on that note. Um, okay, thank you everyone for your work. Uh, we'll take the vote on the board in this instance, please. Thank you. Is it not going? Oh, here we go. Is it gone? Is it done? Yes. You want to, to acknowledge the result, please? Just. Oh, let's, we have to re reset, please, because for some reason it didn't. All right, and now. <laughs> Thank you. What's going on? <laughs> the motion is carried.
12 for, one against. Thank you, Council. And thank you, councillors, for the quality of that debate. It was a really informative and well-debated item. We'll now go on to the Western Town Belt. And just so... Yeah, that's next, isn't it? Yes. Uh, and just so that you're aware what I'm intending to do, I'm hoping to break somewhere between half past 12 and quarter to one for lunch and provide 45 full minutes to allow staff to do their activities. So, um, so that gives us a half an hour. We may or may not finish the entire item. We might finish the questions. We might come to debate afterwards. Let's see how that rolls out. Yes, Councillor Hamilton. And that uh, motion we've changed? Yes, yes. So um, there is a, a motion that has slightly changed that has been drafted by Councillor Hamilton and seconded by Mark, me, and we'll put it up just so that you can see it. But meanwhile, we'll have the um, discussion. I've just asked for that, Mayor Andrew. It's just coming. Hang on, let's we get it up and then we can, yeah. All right, so. Okay. 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 It's, it's coming. Welcome. Good morning. Um, we may as well have staff start to talk to the report and we'll get the, we will get the recommendations. You'll have a good look at them in a minute. Is that okay? Oh, here they are. So, I don't think there's, a lot of, there's a lot of... There's a big recommendation compared with what's in our book, so can you explain what the difference is? Well, I was hoping to have the informational part of the report done by staff first and then Ryan would be happy to talk to his motion. Um, well, do how, do we, how do we know what we're talking to? Like, well, like we come into the meeting with the recommend, staff recommendation. We, yeah. look, if, uh, look, I'm relaxed. If we don't know Ma Ryan, what the changes like are, we don't know where we're heading. OK, I'm relaxed about that, Mayor King, so... Can you put your microphone on? Uh, you know, in lieu of what happened with the 10-year plan, when the um, collateral went out and the questions, we got slammed as council for the way the questions were worded. Um, so it's just a, a handbrake to check that. We, are you able just to expand that on the screen so I can see it? Quite hard to see. Yeah. Um, Still can't see it. It's just a, it's just a, a bit of a, a filter saying it'll come back to, to Paula and myself just to look at the final questioning before it goes out to engagement, just so that it just gives us a chance to check that we don't get into a situation um, like we did with the 10-year plan when all the great work goes out and then it's, it sort of dies on the questions. If that, does that give you clarity? Hmm. So we're only adding that it goes back to the Chief Executive and Chair and Deputy Chair before the final collateral material goes out. It's just having oversight of how the consultation goes through the Chief Executive more than anything. Okay, does everybody understand that? So I can now ask Dave to talk about the additional motion. I'll second Dave's mo uh, amendment. The additional motion relates to the area um, alongside Bryce Street uh, as it goes through the town belt. Um, the need for, because it's um, potentially, and it's shown in the plans of it, there's a potential future railway station there, the railway path down at least, and the Northern Districts Cricket Association development in the area, that um, staff are very keen and we support them doing a, um, a study on the tra transport issues in the area before it goes out for consultation. Um, it's important that, um, that that be sorted out so that we know where we're going and that we don't have one that cuts across the other and there's been no time to do that. Uh, so that's the suggestion. It's not meant to cut across the majority, you know, anything Ryan said or what's in the, in the plan itself. It's just say okay. that particular area, we need to have a good look at that and soon. Understood. I'd so that's your intention. So that give, that's good. It gives the staff and Lance an opportunity to talk yeah. to it as they go through their presentation and to ask your questions when those come up. 
Did you have a seconder? I thought I heard someone say Yes, that. Mark. Okay. Councillor. Can I just ask a question on that motion? Sure. Pardon? Can I just ask a question on that motion? Does that respond to um, page 18 of the paper where, where the, under, under the heading the, transport? Yeah, page 18 under transport. It says TBC, which is, I assume that there's still a gap to be for. Look, uh, it, not that, not specifically. That wasn't the, what did it, but I think that's worth. That's part of it. That's yeah, part yeah. of. Yeah. It, okay. It's only in relation to the Bryce Street. Bryce Street, that road, that road stoppage. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let it, let's go through the presentation with staff at this point in time. Yes. Well. I will, I will. So, um, are you understanding what, have you had the, a discussion about that? Um, a very light discussion and a very brief one, all of half an hour ago. Um, I've got a few questions <laughs> to, um, to ask how this will affect the consultation on this plan, but I mean, I'm happy to discuss that after I've actually gone through it. So um, what, I su what I suggest then no. is we, um, because I don't want to break it off at the wrong time, is that we go through the staff's presentation, mm. then we adjourn for lunch, which gives people to ha time to have those conversations that are required, yeah. then you can come back to the Sorry. table with your questions, and then we can proceed to the decision making. Yes, Council uh, Mayor Andrew. I ask Dave to include with his motion that we won't consider changing the roundabout. That will either roundabout that, how it that's is. That's a discussion in the break, I think. So let, let me go. It's not talking about the roundabout area, Mark. I'm oh, sorry, Mark. Yeah. With all due respect, no, I, I know it's not, but I, mean, I don't even want to go to public consultation on changing a hundred year old roundabout. That's okay, so we're not, to we're not in that space at the moment. Let's not we'll talk let's at not talk, okay. talk when I adjourn. At this moment, if staff could just present where you've got with this, and then we'll take a lunch break and allow you to have the conversations you need. Is yes, that that's right. I would like to be part of those conversations so we can actually explain the rationale behind right. including some of those um, okay. considerations. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as per Council's resolution, we've prepared a draft master plan for the West Town Belt that we consider is ready for public consultation, and we're looking for approval to go out to public consultation today. Um, I would just like to draw your attention to three things. Um, firstly, the addendum that was sent out yesterday afternoon, which expanded on the character areas, um, the outcomes and projects for each specific character area, and that was from section 4.14 onwards. Um, if you don't, aren't looking at that copy, then I just urge you to use the hard copy that has been handed out. Sorry. The Sorry. Yes, the hard copy is a fully updated. It, it is on OneDrive as well, but it's been submitted as a sep as just basically the tail end of the report. It doesn't. Ha it's not the full version. So the hard. Yeah, that's the hard copy. Yes, and that's all correct. Yeah. So apologies about the late submission on that. Yes. No, that's right. There's ten copies. Um, we'll get we'll get some extra additional copies um, organised. No. Um, I have to. Do you know, uh, councillors, if I can have your attention for just one second, given that there's just a, not everybody's got the same information in front of them, staff need to do some thinking and talking with a few individuals. We're going to actually adjourn for lunch now oh, okay. before we get into a melee. It'll yeah. give everyone the chance to get up to speed. Uh, it's a good word, isn't it? Melee. So we will be back at quarter past one. Please. Yeah.